Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at equilibrium and changes in equilibrium. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. So first we're going to talk about market equilibrium. A market is anywhere that connects buyers and sellers. When we graph out a market in economics, we are going to put price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. You can abbreviate it as P and Q. The buyers are going to be represented as a downward sloping demand curve and the sellers are going to be represented as an upward sloping supply curve. That downward sloping demand curve shows the inverse relationship between the price and the quantity that consumers are willing to buy. And that upward sloping supply curve shows the direct relationship between the price and the quantity that producers are willing to sell. Market equilibrium is the price that clears the market. It's the price where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. That means that the number of people willing to sell at that particular price equals the number of people willing to buy at that particular price. We find the equilibrium point where the two curves intersect. The price is found there on that y-axis and we call that the equilibrium price. The quantity down below is called the equilibrium quantity. And market forces are going to push prices towards that equilibrium price. Now price isn't always at equilibrium, sometimes it can be above equilibrium, and when that happens, we are going to have a surplus. Let's say that a baker makes loaves of bread and charges $5 for those loaves of bread. If that price is above equilibrium, labeled P1 here, then we are going to have a low quantity demanded and a high quantity supplied. And we call that a surplus because a surplus exists whenever the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied. The amount of the surplus would be the quantity supplied minus the quantity demanded. But when we have a surplus, prices will eventually fall towards equilibrium. And when the price falls, two things will occur. Fewer loaves of bread are going to be made and more loaves of bread are going to be purchased by consumers. And that's because we have reached equilibrium where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And when prices are below equilibrium, let's say the price of that bread is $1 or labeled P1 here on the graph, then our quantity supplied is going to be much less than the quantity demanded. And anytime the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied, we call that a shortage. We essentially ran out at that price. And the amount of the shortage is QD minus QS. But when the price of bread is below equilibrium, we're going to have a lot of consumers who are unable to buy loaves of bread at that low price. And that's because the people wanting to buy it at that price drastically outnumbered the loaves available. And when there's a shortage, eventually the price of bread is going to rise towards equilibrium. And when it does, two things will happen. Fewer consumers will want to buy bread and more loaves of bread will get made. And as a result, the quantity supplied will equal the quantity demanded when price rises to equilibrium. And we can also find market equilibrium with numbers instead of a graph. On your exam, you could see a market schedule like this one. That's where we have price with all of the different quantities supplied and quantities demanded for those prices. It's a combination of a demand schedule and a supply schedule on the same table. But just like with a graph, the equilibrium is going to be found at the price where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. In this case, that's at $8. And if the price is higher than equilibrium, we're going to have a surplus where the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. And if price is below equilibrium, we will have a shortage where the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. And so the market is going to seek that equilibrium price and quantity. In this case, the equilibrium price is $8 and the equilibrium quantity is 90. And as you should have already learned, supply and demand curves can shift. And when they do, for the reasons you've already learned, the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity is going to move. Let's go over our demand curve shifters to make sure we still remember them. First, we have consumer tastes and preferences. When something is more popular, consumers will demand more of it. The second one is the market size. When there are more consumers in a market, we're going to see an increase in the demand. Our third one is prices of related goods. Remember, substitutes have a direct relationship between the price of one good and the demand for the other good. And complements have a inverse relationship between the price of one good and the demand for the other good. We also have changes in income. Remember, normal goods have a direct relationship between consumer income and the demand for that particular good, while inferior goods have an inverse relationship between the changes in consumer income and the demand for the product. And the last one is expectations for the future. Sometimes predictions about the future will impact consumer behavior today. And so here we have a market with a demand curve and a supply curve and our equilibrium quantity marked. 
If this product becomes more popular, that is going to mean we have an increase in the demand for this product. That is going to increase our equilibrium price and increase our equilibrium quantity. And we find that new equilibrium at the intersection between the new demand curve labeled D1 and the supply curve labeled S. And so an increase in demand increases both price and quantity. We could also see a decrease in the market size. Fewer consumers means less demand, and that will be a shift to the left of that demand curve. That decrease in demand is going to result in a lower equilibrium price and lower equilibrium quantity. Next, let's remind ourselves about supply curve shifters. First one is the price of inputs. Those are the resource prices that go into the production. There's an inverse relationship between a change in price and the supply of a particular product. Next, we have government tools. Taxes are going to decrease supply, subsidies will increase supply, and regulations will generally decrease supply. Next, we have the number of sellers. An increase in the number of firms that are selling a particular product will increase the supply. Also, we have technology changes. New technology is going to shift the supply curve to the right. And we have the prices of other goods that businesses can also produce. An increase in the price of a different good that producers can make will decrease the supply of the good in question. So if we see an increase in the number of farmers within a market, we should see an increase in the supply of the crop that they're growing. That's going to give us a new equilibrium point at the intersection between the new supply curve labeled S1 and the demand curve labeled D. That increase in supply is going to decrease the equilibrium price and increase the equilibrium quantity. We could also see an increase in the price of an input like fertilizer for crops, and that is going to decrease the supply of those crops. That results in the leftward shift of the supply curve, and it gives us a higher equilibrium price and lower equilibrium quantity. And whenever we see these shifts, it's going to change the price consumers pay for a particular good and the number of those goods that are bought. But prices don't immediately move to the new equilibrium, even though a lot of your questions on your exams may assume they do. The reality is that it takes a little bit of time to find that new equilibrium price and quantity. And there have been some questions that deal with the slowness of that change. So let's say that we have a decrease in the demand for this particular product. The price isn't going to immediately change. We're going to have a temporary surplus that will eventually be resolved as a new equilibrium point. When a demand curve shifts to the left, it results in a new lower quantity demanded while the quantity supplied remains at the old equilibrium. That means we now have a surplus because the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. Eventually, the price is going to fall to the new equilibrium and then that surplus is eliminated. And if we see a decrease in the supply of a product, we won't immediately get to the new equilibrium. There will be a temporary shortage before we get there. After the shift, we will have a new lower quantity supplied while the quantity demanded is at the old equilibrium. That means we now have a shortage. Eventually, the shortage will be resolved as the price reaches the new equilibrium point. Now, the last thing we need to look at is double shifts. Double shifts can be tricky when they show up on your exams. Most of the questions you're going to see on your exam will deal with one change happening within a market. When you see one change, one curve can shift and you just have to read the question, decide whether consumers or producers are most likely to be impacted by this change, and then shift that curve either to the right if you think it's an increase or to the left if you think it's a decrease. But when a question deals with two changes within a market, then you could see both curves shifting. And when that occurs, either the price or the quantity will be indeterminate. That means it could increase or decrease. Let me show you what I mean by taking a look at the market graph here. We have our market with our equilibrium point right there, and we're going to start off with a rightward shift of the demand curve. That's an increase in the demand, which is going to increase our price and increase our quantity. But if we have a shift of the supply curve that also is an increase, that's going to push the price back down while the quantity is going to increase further. Now, since both shifts increase the quantity, we know that the quantity is for sure going to increase. But since the first shift increased the price while the second shift decreased the price, the price curve is going to be indeterminate. And that's because it depends on how far we shifted these curves as to whether or not the price is going to end up being higher or lower than the starting point. And since we can't tell how far these curves have shifted, that price is indeterminate, which means it could have increased or decreased. Let's take a look at another example. We have our starting point with our equilibrium quantity and price marked. We're going to start off with a decrease in supply this time that increases the price and decreases the quantity and a decrease in demand, which is going to decrease the price 
and decrease the quantity. Since both of these shifts have decreased the quantity, we know that the quantity is going to decrease for sure. But since the first shift increased the price while the second shift decreased the price, the price is going to be indeterminate. So when supply and demand shift the same direction, price is indeterminate and the quantity is for sure. Next, let's look at the shifts going in the opposite direction. First, we're going to start off with an increase in the supply that drives down the price and increases the quantity. Then we have a decrease in the demand, which drives the price further down and decreases the quantity. Since both shifts have decreased the price, the price is for sure going to decrease. But one shift increased the quantity while the other shift decreased the quantity. And we don't know how big these shifts were which means that the quantity is indeterminate because depending on the size of these shifts, the quantity may have increased or decreased from the original starting point. And it's also possible that the quantity didn't change. And one more example, we have an increase in the demand this time, which increases the price and increases the quantity and a decrease in supply, which increases the price further and decreases the quantity. Since both shifts increase the price, we for sure have an increase in price. And since the first shift increased the quantity while the second shift decreased the quantity, the quantity is indeterminate here, which means it could have increased, decreased, or not changed. Now, when it comes to figuring out double shifts, when in doubt, make sure you graph it out. You can graph out both shifts on one graph like I did a moment ago, or you could split these shifts up on two separate graphs. For example, if you have a decrease in supply, that's going to increase the price and decrease the quantity. And if you have a second change within the quantity that would increase the demand, well, that change would increase the price and increase the quantity. Since both the price changes agree, then that change is going to be determined. In this case, it's a price increase. But over on that x-axis, we see that the quantities disagree. And as a result, they are indeterminate. So graph them together or separate, either way, whichever works for you. Just take your time on those double shifts to make sure you get them right. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about equilibrium, disequilibrium, and changes in equilibrium. If you're ready to practice, head over to the Market Changes Game from ReviewEcon.com and then pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.